The area of Rochester, New York, first inhabited by the Seneca tribe until they lost claim to it in 1797 to American settlers, is considered one of America's first boom towns. Fast forward to November 8, 1803. Colonel Nathaniel Rochester, Major Charles Carroll, and Colonel William Fitzhugh Jr., all from Maryland, purchased a 100-acre area from the state of New York along the Genesee River, where they were able to generate enough power from the three cataracts to power several flour mills. In 1817, the town of Rochesterville was formed. In 1823, Rochesterville became known as Rochester. By 1830, the population of Rochester grew to 9,200 people, and in 1834, Rochester was charted as a city. Rochester's nickname is the Flower City because it was the largest flower producer in the country. It is considered America's first boom town because of the fact that it nearly doubled its population in less than a 10-year span. In the 19th century, Rochester was home to a significant unrest in labor, race and gender discrimination, and anti-war protest. Now, we go into more detail about the city and truly discover the hidden treasures of Rochester. First, we visit the Eastman Kodak Company. The founder of Eastman Kodak, George Eastman, lived 1854 to 1932 and was an inventor, businessman, and philanthropist. He became a pioneer in photography by popularizing the use of roll film and bringing photography to the mainstream market. He also helped develop the city of Rochester by funding many projects such as the Eastman School of Music, many dentistry and medical buildings at the University of Rochester, and donating money to the development of RIT. In his last two years, he was in lots of pain because of a spinal disorder and he killed himself. He left a note saying, to my friends, my work is done, why wait? It is also reported that a possible reason for his suicide was because he was secretly gay and somebody found out. In the back of his estate, there is a shed that is supposedly where he met with men. There is an underground tunnel between his house and the shed where he could sneak through at night. After he killed himself, he was cremated and his ashes were put in Eastman Business Park because he said he wanted to watch over his company after he died. An interesting fact about his Kodak company is that it had the ability to start a nuclear war because in the basement of one of the industrial buildings, there was a nuclear reactor loaded with 3.5 pounds of enriched uranium. It is known that most of the money Kodak made didn't come from film, but from different chemicals they worked with and sold for medical, engineering, and warfare use. They also tested products for different companies such as cosmetics on dogs. The Eastman Kodak Company was one of the world's largest engineering companies and it was the most advanced of its time. Next, in the heart of Rochester, is the Chase Tower, formerly known as the Lincoln Tower. When the Rochester subway was running, the Lincoln Building was one of the most popular boarding locations. If you go below ground, the doors leading to the platform are still there, though they are locked. Also, in the basement, there is a giant safe protected by three feet wide walls and all of Western New York State's money was kept in the safe at one point. The building also has a bunker about three stories below ground that was used as protection from airstrikes during times of war. The building is now an office building for the Chase Banking Company. Mount Hope Cemetery is the resting place of thousands. Many famous people rest here, including the children of Buffalo Bill, who was a hunter, scout, and showman. Also in Mount Hope is the grave of Frederick Douglass. Douglass was a free slave that was an anti-slavery speaker and writer. He published an abolitionist newspaper called the North Star in Rochester. One of his good friends, Susan B. Anthony, is also buried at Mount Hope. She was a women's rights activist and a social reformer who played a pivotal role in the suffrage movement. In 1872, she was arrested for voting in Rochester and her trial was widely publicized. She started off being widely accused for her efforts to make a change in women's rights and on her 80th birthday was invited to celebrate in the White House with President William McKinley. She was the first woman to be represented on coinage when she appeared on the dollar coin in 1979. People can also visit her home in Rochester. Near the low falls of the Genesee River, the Dinosaur Barbecue, a popular restaurant in Rochester, used to be a mailing post where the abandoned subway system would import mail to the city. Just north of the Dinosaur Barbecue, an aqueduct crosses over the Genesee River. Unlike the other bridge that crosses over the river nearby, this one has windows along it. This is because the old Rochester subway system used to run beneath here. At one point, the subway was more popular than the one in New York City. It also delivered all newspapers into the city. 
Now, the subway is abandoned and full of different artists' graffiti. In 1934, students and teachers from Theodore Roosevelt School contacted the then 69 countries of the world and traded an American Shirley Temple doll for a doll dress in that country's traditional clothing. This trade was worked through the Minister of Foreign Affairs. By 1940, they collected about 180 dolls and gave them to the public library. Today, if you go to the secret room in the Children's Center, you can see the collection of now over 250 dolls. Across the street at the Rundell Library, a ghost haunts the building. Supposedly, the ghost of Mrs. Young haunts the basement. She died in 1902 after getting in an argument with her husband that night. Her body was found and no one could ever solve the mystery of how she died. Years later, the library was built over where her body was found. There have been reports of hauntings at the library up to this day. Now, in the High Falls District of Rochester, near the Genesee Brewery, is the High Falls of the River. In the fall of 1829, a man named Sam Patch became famous when he survived a 125-foot jump down Niagara Falls. Shortly after this, he arrived in Rochester to jump over the High Falls. His first attempt was successful, but when he decided to repeat the stunt, he never came back above the water and his body was found frozen the next spring in Charlotte. The newspapers that reported his death tried to blame the crowd because people at the event have said that it looked as if he fell rather than jumped off the falls and the papers say he got nervous from all the pressure and fell to his death. In his memory, the Sam Patch boat gives tours on the Erie Canal. At the Port of Rochester is the city's oldest lighthouse. The Charlotte Genesee Lighthouse was constructed in 1822. In 1863, the Keeper's House was reconstructed to replace the original. The tower is a total 52 feet high and is open to visitors. Close to the cemetery in Highland Park, Warner Castle was built in 1854. Horatio Gates Warner designed his home after the ancestral castle of the Clan Douglas. The sunken gardens in the back of the house are rumored to have a sealed off entrance to Illuminati catacombs. Originally built in the early 1800s, the Walter Psychiatric Building was an insane asylum. The building was used to keep the mentally insane from being a burden to their families and trying to bring the patients to some state of happiness. One way they did this was by having the people here farm organic food. This food was used all over Rochester. Today, the state owns the building and it is under high security. Opening to the public in 1982, the Strong National Museum of Play is both an interactive children's museum and the home of the National Toy Hall of Fame. In 1968, when it opened, it was used to examine Margaret Woodbury Strong's massive toy collection. In 2002, the museum acquired the Toy Hall of Fame and is available for viewing by the public. Completed in 1825, the Erie Canal is what allowed settlement, agriculture, and industries to grow in Rochester and other parts of western New York. After a century, the canal ceased to go through the heart of Rochester, but is routed around the southern border and goes through towns outside downtown Rochester. It crosses the Genesee River in Genesee Valley Park in a fascinating four-way water intersection. Finally, we learn about Abbott's frozen custard. In 1902, Arthur Abbott was spending his days traveling with a circus and his nights perfecting a frozen custard recipe. In 1926, he settled in Rochester and began to sell his dessert. By 2005, Abbott's became nationally known and is sold in multiple states. With his motto, it's always been about the taste, Abbott's is still very successful today. Rochester, New York may be known for its medicine, engineering, and flour mills, but it is my intent to also help spread the less known secrets of the city.